Now that you know the properties and ID tools for identifying minerals, I'm going to start going into our different mineral groups. The first mineral group is really, really big. It is the most abundant mineral type. So we get one video for the first group, silicates, and another video for all the other minerals because this one is the main one. So here on this board, I have SiO2. Si on a periodic table of elements is silicon. And silicon, like Silicon Valley, is an element that is commonly found in rocks. The reason Silicon Valley is so called is because any motherboards or chips or computers are made with silicates. So if you were to go and get some sand and melt it down and turn it into fine sheets, those sheets of silicates are what's used in computers. Ergo, Silicon Valley. So silicates, the first part is silicon. The other part, the O2, that's oxygen. O2 on its own is a gas, but when it binds up with the silicon, it becomes hard, it becomes solid, and that's a requirement for being a mineral. So the silicon oxygen combination is really abundant. About 80% of the Earth's crust is silicates. The most common silicate mineral is quartz. That's what this one is here. My best friend has a cat named quartz. And quartz is a silly cat, so that's how I remember that quartz is a silicate. Plus, I know it because I'm a geology teacher, but it's an easy way to remember it. Another way to identify quartz easily is basically hedging your bets. If you walk outside and you find a rock that's just like laying around in a forest, especially if you're walking around in California, I mean, we've got a lot of exposed rocks, and silicates are all over the place, so quartz is all over the place. If you look at something like granite in your kitchen countertops, granite is made up of quartz crystals. So you'll find silicates all around you. I mentioned in my introductory icebreaker video that I love to go rock climbing. It is commonly done in groups and one of the members of my rock climbing groups jokingly started calling himself the quartz hunter and he does this whole Australian accent and he's a like, quartz hunter and he'll jump out and be like there's a quartz. And so I know it's a joke because quartz is everywhere. It's not hard to hunt a quartz. But the kids in our group didn't realize that it was being done as a joke, and they were really proud of themselves for finding quartz. This quickly became annoying because they were pointing out a quartz every couple of seconds because they are everywhere. So for quartz hunting, all you really have to do is go outside. This one here is a blank white color, but as with fluorite, you know how fluorite had the different colors just because of trace minerals? Quartz has a huge array of appearances. So here we have our classroom box of quartz. Yeah, let me bring it down. And you can see we have this huge array of colors. We've got the purple amethyst quartz. We have hey, that one's not one. We have these more amber colored quartz. A light blue, light green. We have a huge array of colors. We have milky quartz, there's rose quartz. So quartz comes in a huge array of colors and is one of the most common silicate minerals. So the mineral quartz is a common silicate. Quartz is incredibly hard and strong. It's because it's silica tetrahedron, as you'll read about in your PowerPoint this week for silicates. You'll have a PowerPoint all about silicates, and you also have an activity in which you'll explore the different types of silicate structures. Quartz is a framework silicate. It's super duper strong. Another strong silicate is olivine. So silicates come in a huge array. You also have what's called a sheet silicate. Sheet silicates are so-called because they have a singular plane of cleavage, as opposed to quartz, which has an irregular fracture. It's not going to break regularly. But if you have a muscovite or lipidolite, these are both silicates. They aren't nearly as strong as quartz is because they have a single planar sheet cleavage. So this is also a silicate, but you'll explore in your lab activity the different types of frameworks, the different types of silicon tetrahedron bonding to come up with the variety of appearances and cleavages and hardnesses 